Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be talking about how to use Binance's API in order to set up a notification um, structure to inform the user when an asset in their cryptocurrency portfolio moves above a certain threshold. Now that was a lot of words, um, but essentially what I'm going to be doing or the, the uh, general purpose of this program, this Python program, is to save the user time so that they don't have to be constantly checking um, their portfolio to see if an asset is moving rapidly, either in the positive direction or negative direction. Um, so like I said, we're going to be utilizing Binance's API. Um, and as a preface, I don't claim to be an expert in crypto and Python and API or any of these things. However, I, I would argue that I do know uh, a little bit of, of information, uh, certainly enough to, to educate um, people who may not know as much. Um, so yeah, I, I would say I'm not an expert, but I'm also not a dummy. So keep that in mind moving forward. Um, additionally, uh, as I, as I move, move along, I inherently am assuming a certain level of background knowledge, but if that assumption is incorrect, you know, feel free to comment any questions, concerns. If I didn't um, touch on something that you would have liked me to, then let me know. I'm a very friendly dude, so I uh, will be pretty responsive to any questions asked. So that being said, we are going to be looking at this. So I'm just showing this graph of Hodge to uh, illustrate a point. Now, those of you that have more experience with the crypto space know this. But as a general rule of thumb, cryptocurrencies are very volatile. Now we, hear, we see here with Hajj on March 11th, um, their price is 0.000212. Now look a little bit later, when it spikes March 12th, the price is 0. 0.000713. Now, if we want to calculate this in terms of a, um, a multiplier, the, uh, the asset moved up by uh, 330%, which is very significant. And if I am a port, if I have a holding in Hajj, perhaps while it's rising, I want to buy more. You know, when I see that it has uh, moved up by 30%, maybe I wanna place an order. But the problem is, in, is in order to know this, in order to uh, know when it's moving up or down, I have to be constantly looking. So the goal of this program is to save the user time and to have a Python program looking for them so that the user can stay up to date and make the most informed decisions that they possibly can. Now moving forward, um, I'm going to be talking about why we're using Binance and, oh wait, I skipped over a huge part actually. Um, so I don't know, uh, again, how, how far deep you guys are into the cryptocurrency space, but if you are not and you're being introduced, I would for sure recommend reading the Bitcoin white paper. Um, the two aspects that really stood out to me the most was decentralization, the fact of uh, returning power to the people, to you know people like you and I. Um, additionally, the incorporation of blockchain provides an immense amount of security. So those are my two main takeaways um, from this sort of uh, structure for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So I'd for sure give it a read if you haven't. Um, but moving forward, I'm gonna be talking about Binance, the reason that I'm using Binance and its API is because Binance is for surely the uh, one of the highest regarded exchanges within the cryptocurrency space, um, as indicated by their exchange score, which you know culminates a variety of factors such as web traffic, liquidity, volume, as well as just legitimacy in their numbers. So it's the most accurate uh, exchange as of right now, so it should provide us with the most powerful API. Um, that considered, I'm going to be talking about its API. Now, for those of you who don't know, what an API does is it allows a user, such as myself, to retrieve information from a server, such as Binance. 
Now the types of information that you can retrieve are listed in its documentation. So this API specifically has a variety of endpoints, including general endpoints where you can get exchange information about um, the Binance's server, um, server time, system status, things like that. We also have market data information where you can get recent trades, historical trades, uh, candlesticks, tickers, etc. We can also actually access our AP, uh, sorry, our Binance account using their API, where we can place orders, we can place test orders, we can cancel orders, um, a lot of things. We can also access. And all this stuff is, is uh, documented in a very easy to read manner. So if you want to explore this, certainly give it a go. Um, we can access sub accounts. I don't know what that is. And we can also do margin trading, which is really cool. Um, so let's, let's see, where am I at? Yeah, so those are its capabilities. And this is why I believe Binance is the number one um, exchange as of right now. Um, but now I'm going to be giving a demonstration of the program itself, or sorry, an explanation and then a demonstration. Um, and while I explain, I'll try and again, I don't know how much you know, so I don't want to assume too much. So I will try and be not too technical in my explanation. Um, so the program that I wrote and the reason that I didn't write this as I was making the video is because one, I'm bad at multitasking, but two, this took me a couple days, so I don't want to be filming for 72 hours straight. I'm sure, I'm sure you also do not want to be viewing 72 hours. Um, so we start out the program here by importing Binance's client. Next, um, for those of you who don't know, in order to access a uh, an API, you have to have a key. Um, Binance specifically, you have to have a key as well as a secret key. And all of these keys are unique for every user. Now I have them stored in a text file and here's where we read them into the Python program. Here's where we launch the client and then here is how we customize the program for the user. We ask them, how many market checks would you like this program to perform per hour? Because again, the point of this program is to uh, co be constantly checking the market in the background so the user does not have to. So we're asking how many times would you like this program to check the market per hour? Then how many hours would you like this program to be, program to be running? Then at what percentage change would you like to be notified of? So what this is saying is in terms of percent change um, using 24 hour data, when would you like to be notified? And this is also, um, a positive percent change, but also negative. So if you say that you want to be notified whenever an asset in your portfolio moves above a 2% threshold, this is positive 2%, but also negative 2%. So above 2% or below negative 2%. So either of those will trigger a notification. And then this is asking what message would you like to be emailed with? And then finally, what is your email? Um, here is where we define a function where we can be updating our portfolio. Here's where we define our portfolio in a Python dictionary. And then here, uh, each asset has a corresponding 24 hour percent change value. Now here is where we actually interact with Binance's API and get the tickers from its client. Um, this line right here allows us to update our portfolio data structure with uh, Binance's up-to-date information. Here's where that information is printed to the screen and here's where that information is documented into a text file. Um, this function is where we utilize Gmail's H, uh, sorry, um, here's where we utilize Gmail's uh, emailing protocol. And again, I'm not an expert on these things, quite honestly, um, Google had a lot of these things laid out in a uh, help forum that I was able to, to use. So we store our password on a text file, we read that password in, we create a secure SSL context, then we launch a local server where we use our port and we use our context. Um, we log into our server with our email and password as defined here with the email, and then the password is defined here. And then here's where we send an email 
from my email to my email um, with the message being that that we defined earlier. Um, and again, the, the point here is that, you know, with your phone, you can have, uh, you can enable the notification to actually ring a bell whenever you get an email so that you can be notified uh, when something moves a certain way. Additionally, if this is running on your PC, you can just have your email up in the background so that you get um, little dings when an email is, is sent to you. You can also set up an email strictly for this, for this, so that you can't, so you don't confuse, you know, work emails, maybe promos, random ass emails that you might get, so you don't confuse those with uh, emails for this program. Just a, just a consideration. So here is where the um, the magic happens. So here is where we make sure that we iterate or go through the loop as many times as the user wants. Here is where we update our portfolio, and here is where the decision support structure is actually laid out. So what we're saying here is if, if any item in the portfolio goes above the positive threshold or below the negative threshold, email the user. Here's where we keep track of our iteration, and here is where we sync each iteration to the movement of time. We know that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. We divide 3,600 over the checks frequency. So if we want to be checking the market um, once every three hours or once every two hours, for example, um, we divide this by two, we get 1800. So each iteration of the loop is going to be separated out by 1800 seconds, aka 30 minutes. Um, and in this way, we're able to pseudo track time. Um, that being said, let's give it a go. So we're gonna run our program for some reason. Oh, I, I recently ran it, so I need to uh, restart the kernel actually. Um, that'll only take seven seconds, I hope. Yep, how many market checks we wanna do? We'll say uh, four market checks per hour for one hour. Um, that one percent has changed and we'll just say message. My email is this, boom. And if I were doing this for its proper use case, I wouldn't set the percentage change at one just because you're always going to be notified because there's most likely an asset that is above the 1% threshold. I would probably set this for you know 10%, maybe 20%, maybe even 30%, just so you can know um, a one percentage change can be easily chalked up to random noise in a chart, whereas 10%, 30%, 50% is a lot less going to be less attributable to random movement, but more so going to be a, um, a fundamental change in the stock's price. So that's what we're trying to separate, um, the noise from the actual movement. But for sake of example, just to show that this program works, I set it to be one. So given these numbers, we have these percentage change values. Um, ADA is at two, Litcoin is at negative 1.8, and then Uniswap is at 1.8, and Ethereum is at negative 0.9. So theoretically, three out of these four, um, these three uh, should trigger an email because they uh, go outside of the um, threshold that we set. So let's check our email. And wouldn't you believe it, we have three emails, message, message, and message, boom. Um, so that's the program. And you know, if you don't know Python, feel free to copy this code. This is not mine. Well, I guess it is mine, but it's not like, you know, proprietary code or anything like that. Um, the goal here is, you know, I was doing this project for school um, and there weren't that many educational resources out. So honestly, I just wanted to put something out there for people who, you know, might want to be using the API. And again, I know I said this, said this earlier, but if you uh, have any questions, please comment. Like I, uh, I, I want to I wanna help you guys out with this just because I kind of struggle with this and it's very annoying. 
but also I, I don't think that you should have to have a programming background just to um, want to save time and want to be updated on relevant information, you know? I, I don't think that should have to be a, uh, a necessary step. Um, additionally, a lot of people will try and program things for you and try and sell you things. Don't do that, just program it yourself. It's really not that hard. So that being said, I think that about covers it. Oh, one thing I also wanted to talk about is it would be very easy to, and where I want to move this into the future, it would be very easy to transfer some of the information covered in this and some of the capabilities covered in Binance's API documentation to transform this into a, an actual trading bot where you can say like, hey, if this happens in its price, I want to buy, I want to sell X amount of, uh, of an asset. Additionally, you can import um, asset uh, scientific uh, indicators so that you can say, hey, if, if this goes above the moving average, if this goes um, at this Bollinger Band or, or whatever uh, indicator you want to use, um, that you should do it and that you can do it. So the capability is immense and there is a lot of research. Um, this is just one, one piece of research that shows that it is possible to make a profit using trading bots. Um, so I think the capability is there. This is just a, a component of, uh, of a trading bot. So I think I want to do that in the future. Um, maybe I'll make a, a video of it. Maybe I won't. Um, but yeah, that's certainly a route that you can pursue. Now, all that being said, I, I think that that about uh, that about concludes it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna sign off. But thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you have any feedback. Um, but yeah, have a great day.